Hey there, it's Jim. Uh, doing a little bit, a uh, little bit more of the record box sent to me my, by my older brother. Um, this is part two of a forty-pound box of records that showed up in the mail from my brother, um, and uh, will probably be a the longest video that I ever do and um, yeah one of the most amazing uh, VCLTs ever uh, yeah so uh, cheers let's get started okay so uh, Santana. I believe this is Santana by Santana. Uh, I, I believe so. I, I think this is self-titled. Um, it does have one of the coolest covers in the history of psychedelic covers. It's just so cool. Uh, and such a groovy picture of the band. Um, yeah, so very cool. Uh, I, um, I'm a fan of Santana, though I have not spent a lot of my life listening to them. Uh, him, them, I believe Santana is a them, Carlos Santana being the him. Uh, so yeah, very happy to have that and, and I'll be checking that out. Uh, uh, this next one is Eagles, The Long Run. I, uh, I grew up hearing a lot of Eagles, uh, listening to a lot of Eagles. Um, this record came out when I was in junior high and it was totally crapped on by everyone. Um, I, I, probably because it wasn't Hotel California, I don't know. Uh, I remember they had taken a few years off between Hotel California in the long run. Uh, I, I don't know what everybody's problem with, with it was. There were some great songs on here. Um, you know, uh, The Long Run, uh, Heartache Tonight. Uh, I can't tell you why. I remember that being like such a great like slow jam for the roller rink. Oh my God, seventh grade. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. Uh, I, I enjoyed this record when it came out. I, um, you know, I know that I owned it, um, uh, but it was definitely kind of, um, transitioning from my sort of the music that I grew up with and transitioning into the music that I started picking myself. So there was definitely a, a point right there that, and, and that record was probably right on the cusp of um, stuff that I had just was part of the ether, part of the environment of, of, of growing up in my family and growing up in the 70s. And, um, and it, by that time I was, I was really starting to pick out music and pick out records that told the world who I was and uh, and I, I probably didn't listen to a lot of Eagles after that but um, this next one is um, Hotel California which I listened to this like crazy when I was I guess 10 years old or 10 11 years old um, I listened to this so much uh, great record um, I have no idea if any of these records are the actual copies I listened to growing up, they belonged to my brother. Uh, they were duplicates. I don't know if he sent me things that um, he had replaced with nicer copies. Um, it's what I would have done. <laughs> um, in which case, these may be the older copies, in which case they may be the copies that I played growing up, uh, which would be freaking awesome. Um, I don't know whether that's the case or not, but 
I'm going to tell myself that's the case and I'm going to enjoy that idea. Um, uh, the Moody Blues, uh, Long Distance Voyager. I will fully admit that I, I'm not that familiar with Moody Blues. I know Knights in White Satin. And that's probably it. That's probably the extent of my Moody Blues knowledge. Um, so I'll, I'll check it out. It's, uh, it's cool. I think every record in the 70s just about seems to be a gatefold, uh, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is interesting. I, I, don't, I don't remember it that way, but apparently that's the case because just about every one of these records are a gatefold. Um, I, I love, uh, this is another Moody Blues record. Um, every good boy deserves favor. Wow, that's a creepy cover. Uh, super creepy cover. Really kind of cool, though. Uh, and really kind of creepy. Um, oh, it gets even creepier. Ah, oh, check this out. So there's like some weird blurry children holding out a teddy bear. Well, this creepy old dude mesmerizes this kid with some kind of crystal thing. That's a weird cover. Okay, uh, I'm gonna guess Every Good Boy Deserves Favor is a reference to the notes on a guitar, but not being a musician. I could be wrong about that, but E, G, B, D, F, I'm gonna guess. Those all seem like notes to me. I don't know. Days of Future Past by the Moody Blues. So this contains the one song that I know from this band, uh, which is Nights in White Satin. Um, but I'm happy to, to check this out and um, I, will, uh, I will enjoy it. Because that is, that is a fabulous song. It really is. Beautiful song. Oh, <laughs> uh, Neil Diamond moods. Uh, nice. N Neil Diamond, to me, growing up, uh, nice, Song Song Blue, Captain Sunshine, Pork Night. Uh, so this has got to be early 70s. Uh, what are we at? 72, yeah. Um, so he was this guy growing up that I thought of as a singer-songwriter, kind of like Leonard Cohen or um, uh, I don't know, um, Tim Buckley or something. Uh, I just kind of, in my head, he was sort of lumped into that era because those are the records that I kind of knew. I think his, his first record, this is not his first record, but I think his first record um, always stuck in my mind as a very sort of singer-songwriter record, and and uh, and I really loved it when I was when I was younger. I listened to it quite a bit, um, and and then I and that that was the extent of of my Neil Diamond connection. Um, my mom owned a few Neil Diamond records, but I don't think I really listened to him much. I think just the first record was the only one that I really listened to. And I didn't have any perception of him other than that. I knew, I remember him being in in uh, the the remake of the jazz singer, the movie, uh, in the late seventies, I think. Um, but that was that's sort of the extent of of how I thought of Neil Diamond. And and it wasn't until maybe the nineties that I saw a some concert footage of him doing a show, and I just had no idea that he was this like big kind of Vegas act kind of guy. And, and he's like all rhinestones and sequins. And I just didn't know that that's what Neil Diamond was. Because in my mind, he was this first, the, his first, rec first couple records maybe, um, which seemed very different than, than the Neil Diamond that is the performer. Uh, and so it's just this disconnect in my mind, which I just think is funny. Um, and uh, yeah, but I, I'll check it out. So I, I have heard that record, but 
um, but it's been a very long time since I've heard that record. Oh, cool. Um, Loggins and Messina on stage. So uh, I grew up hearing a lot of Loggins and Messina, and it's, um, it's my understanding that Jim Messina lived in Ojai, which is where I grew up. Uh, or he lived nearby or something. Um, I heard a lot of references to him when I was younger. My brother may have spoken about him or something. Um, I don't know if he met him or, or knew him or something, but, uh, yeah. Um, but I think he was, he was local, uh, the band, however, was a, a big band, and everybody knows Kenny Loggins. Um, and I'll, I'll be happy to, to listen to this. Leo Kotke, uh, My Feet Are Smiling. Leo Kotke. I have heard the name, but that's all I know about Leo Kotke. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm curious. I'll give it a try. Fleetwood Mac, Mirage. I, uh, I don't know this record at all. Uh, probably the last Fleetwood Mac record I knew at all was Tusk, maybe. Um, around 1980 or so that came out. And I... I think I was still sort of being exposed to and listening to AM radio and I would hear Fleetwood Mac. Um, but I don't know this record at all. Uh, could be interesting. Woodstock. This was a huge, huge part of, 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 of my musical growing up, uh, my youth. Um, I was a little kid when I listened to this record. Uh, I, I learned how to spell fuck from this record. Uh, Country Joe and the Fish taught me how to spell. I was introduced to so many bands, so many artists from this record. Uh, I mean, so many things. <laughs> so um, I probably listened to this record a thousand times. I hope this is the record that I listen to. I hope this is the copy, but I have no idea. And um, I'm not going to ask my brother because I don't want to know. I'll just pretend it is or just feel that it is. Um, although I could swear that it would be in much worse condition because I was not gentle on records. Um, so that's awesome that, that, that he sent me a copy of Woodstock. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I listened to this so many times uh, until, he, until Paul moved away. Um, so probably I stopped listening to this record by the time I was nine, eight or nine. Uh, but I listened to it a lot before that. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I almost picked that up on record store day, uh, because I guess they just re-released a, a new version of it. And I saw it there as I walked in the door and I thought about it. And then when I went back to look for it, it was gone. So um, I'm kind of glad I didn't pick it up because this is a much better version. Um, even if it's beat to crap and there's uh, scratches all over it, I'll enjoy that. Uh, nice. 2001, A Space Odyssey. Um, I am a huge, huge, huge Stanley Kubrick fan. Uh, I um, absolutely obsess over his movies. I love his movies. Um, I, the only soundtrack that I've ever owned from from Kubrick, however, was the soundtrack to uh, A Clockwork Orange, which um, I have replaced um, by Wendy Carlos, because uh, it was such a groundbreaking and 
uh, amazing soundtrack. Um, I think probably the first synthesizer record, if I'm not mistaken, or one of the very first. Um, uh, definitely, um, definitely one of the first records by an openly trans person. Uh, that was, that's a big deal too. Um, uh, so the 2001 soundtrack, what I remember about this is that the tracks that are on this are all classical compositions that Kubrick had placed into the film as a scratch track, as a, as a track basically to sort of set a rhythm, set a tone, and it's, it's like, a, it's like a, what you'd use before you're composing, so you have some music to kind of set the tone of the film, um, but it was never intended to be the final score, and then uh, at one point they just decided yeah this totally works so they kept it that's what i remember it could be that i'm remembering the wrong film but but that's how i that's how i think of 2001 and so i'm sticking with it uh that's very cool so i love anything kubrick and so to have a another kubrick soundtrack is awesome <laughs> jesus christ superstar uh so this record is the soundtrack to um the musical is the, I, I don't know if this is the Broadway cast recording or what it is. Uh, let's see. But I, I remember this from being a kid and the, um, yeah. Uh, yep. Um, my, my sisters listen to this record a lot. Um, I was not necessarily a big fan, but uh, it was played a lot around me. Um, maybe I'll give it another shot. Uh, could be fun. Uh, this I'll play a lot. Uh, Elton John, Tumbleweed Connection. Um, yeah, there was a lot of Elton John played in our house. Um, both, well, all three of my siblings that listen to music a lot, um, I think they all enjoyed Elton John, so, uh, Elton John got played a lot, um, and nobody argued about it. <laughs> so, four out of five, uh, one abstaining, uh, it's good. Uh, Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Uh, this is um, another, this is a great, both of these records are great Elton John records. Uh, like I said, everything's a gatefold in the 70s. Uh, triple gatefold. I can't even fit that on camera, I'm sure. Uh, I remember this because I remember the illustrations inside this gatefold. Um, and... Yeah, this is so cool. I, I, I don't know whether these are the actual records or not, but I'm, I'm, I'm going with that because I, I, makes sense. Carol King Tapestry. I know that this is not the copy of Tapestry that I grew up listening to because that copy was my sister's and it is beat to crap. I saw it in December and there is not much left to that record. Uh, it, uh, this is a very nice, clean copy. Um, uh, very nice. This was a great record. Carole King was probably one of the greatest songwriters of the 20th century. Um, just a, a brilliant, brilliant songwriter. Uh, and this is just a classic record. I, I love this record. This record is the record for uh, when you want to feel like you are a woman and you want the world to hear you roar, that's what this record is. It's in all of us. It's a great record. 
I do not know this record, but this is really awesome. So this is um, Carol King again, really rosy soundtrack. It looks like it's a TV movie soundtrack, but it's it's Maurice Sendak, uh, Where the Wild Things Are. Um, I have never heard of this movie and I would like to because I love Maury Sendak. Uh, so I'm going to have to look this up and see what this was all about. Um, I'm going to check this out. Very cool. I mean, it's Carol King and Maury Sendak. You can't go wrong. Uh, Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams Are Made of This. Uh, if you watch my videos, you've seen me post about this. Um, great record. Uh, it is a second copy. It's amazing that there are so few duplicates in here. I think there's only been a couple so far. Um, but uh, they will either find a new home or they will find a nice home here with me. Um, that is a great record. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme. Um, super classic. Uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, I don't think anybody needs me to educate them about Simon and Garfunkel or that record. Um, nice. Uh, I, you know, the, I'm going to guess that most of these are not represses. Because, um, yeah. Uh, Janis Joplin, Pearl. Um, <laughs> nice. This is just great. These are all in great condition and, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is like mint. These were not my sister's records. My sister was not good <laughs> with her records. But apparently my brother Paul was very particular with his records because these are very clean, and very nicely kept. Uh, nice. Uh, all right. What do we have next? Just a few more. Uh, Chris Christopherson, me and Bobby McGee. Uh, I'm, it says formally entitled Christofferson. So this, this could have been, um, his first record. Uh, uh, help me make it through the night. Me and Bobby McGee. Uh, yeah. Sunday morning coming down. There's a lot of good songs on this. I was a big, um, Chris Christopherson fan as a kid. I, um, I remember being maybe nine or 10 years old and for some reason we had HBO, which was a, a little unusual because we weren't much of a TV family. Um, but, uh, we had, we had HBO and it was, this was the mid seventies. So I think it was right around the time that HBO started and they played Convoy with Chris Christopherson and, uh, they, they probably, I, I probably watched it 50, 75 times. I, I just, I just, every time it was on, I watched it. Um, and I, I, I just loved that. I, I loved him in that movie and I loved the movie and. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, the Silver Tongue Devil and I, Chris Christopherson. Um, one of the first records that was ever mine, a tape, I had a cassette copy of, uh, or cassette tape, um, of this record, Silver Tongue Devil and I. Uh, and it was definitely one of those things where as a kid, the substance of the, of the record isn't as important as the fact that it's yours, that, that, that it, it belongs to you and not to somebody else. Uh, and so I remember listening to this record all the time. Um, and 
I loved the record, but I but I think it, its its biggest appeal was that was that it it was mine because um, I was the youngest of five and there weren't that many things that belonged to me and to not and and not to everyone <laughs> and uh, and so uh, you know yeah uh, this this record means a lot to me that's that's really cool to see <sighs> Jackson Brown running on empty. Uh, this, this record is entirely a record that makes me think of my sister, Roxana. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, run on an empty, uh, cocaine, uh, the loadout and stay. Uh, I love Stay, They're his cover of, of Stay, um, and the loadout and Stay are just such a, a perfect pairing of songs, and David Lindley uh, is providing, the I think, the falsetto on Stay, and it's just so good. Um, it, this record just makes me think of, of my sister. Uh, great record. Um, I think when, when she was offering records to me, I think I wanted to take that record and she said, take any record that you want. And I remember pulling that record and, and I think she saw that I wanted it and I saw the expression on her face and I knew that that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so I put it back. Um, so yeah, it's really great to have that. Uh, okay, what's next? Oh yeah, uh, nice. Okay, so this is um, the Kinks, one for the road. Um, this is a live record from, I think, the early '80s. Um, 1980, yeah, uh, with. Like, such great stuff. Lola, David Watts, 20th Century Man. It just, just great stuff. I, I love the Kinks. I, I think of the Kinks as uh, one of the earliest punk bands. They just, they just had that all over them. Um, I know everybody calls MC5 and Iggy Pop the sort of proto-punk band, but that's only because they were loud and sloppy. Uh, I think I think the Kinks had the the punk spirit as much as as Iggy and and MC5 did, and uh, and as much as anybody who people call punk these days. Um, love the Kinks, and this is great because I don't I don't have any Kinks records. Um, and they seem to be pretty tough to track down. Grand Funk? I know nothing about Grand Funk. It's possible that I know some of their songs, but I could not tell you what songs those are that I would know. So I know there's a band called Grand Funk. And now I have one of their records. So we'll check it out. Yes. Um, my brother was a huge Yes fan, and I, um, I, I would like to say that I was there with him, but it was not my band. Uh, I did, however, love Roger Dean's artwork. Um, my brother had a copy of Roger Dean's book, which I think was just, I think it was in my head, it's called album, but it could be something totally different. Um, but it's a uh, I loved I loved his artwork, and uh, the early Yes records all had Roger Dean's work all over it. This cover is so '80s, um, and uh, yeah, um, yes. 
the Avengers. <laughs> nice. Ah, this is very cool. Uh, Golden Greats by the Ventures. Nice. Nice. What's on this? Telstar, Rebel Rouser, Pipeline, Tequila, Wipeout. Ah! So, when I was uh, young, I was a little skate punk, and um, we, um, we didn't listen to punk rock because punk rock didn't really exist at that time in the mid-70s, and um, we listened to, you know, rock. Like, uh, punk was just starting to show up, um, but mostly we listened to bands like, you know, Foreigner and Van Halen and, you know, when those, when those bands were first around. Um, but we also listened to, to uh, the Ventures, and uh, yeah, I mean, to me, to me, the Ventures, the Ventures are punk rock. Um, love that band. And last record, <sighs> last record is um, music from Big Pink by the band. Uh, this is awesome. So I heard a lot of the band growing up, listened to this record a lot um, in both when I was young and high school and after, uh, was a big fan of, of everyone in this band that, you know, um, Robbie Robertson and yeah. I don't need to tell you guys about this record. This is awesome. So that's everything. Um, yeah, two, two loads of vinyl uh, out of one box. So if you made it through this whole thing, um, congratulations, you should get a medal. And uh, I, I don't even know how to say thank you to my brother, um, but this is, this is very cool. So thank you. And um, if you subscribe to this, uh, to this channel, thank you. Uh, if you took the time to watch this, thank you. And if you don't subscribe, go ahead and subscribe and there will be more videos and they hopefully won't be as long winded, but, um, but maybe they'll be interesting or entertaining or informative or just a way to waste time. So thank you. <laughs>